Today we are going to cover two topics. They look easy, but it eventually became quite, uh, it took quite a while. First of all, we want to cover the part on isometric drawing, how to draw and all. Okay. Now, what is actually isometric drawing? Very simply, What is isometric drawing? Isometric drawing is essentially drawings that attempt to simulate 3D. Okay? It is actually a two-dimensional drawing. Like for example, if I show you the 3D view of this, you are essentially drafting two-dimensionally. Okay, it looks two-dimensional. See, it's actually two-dimensional, flat, nothing happening on the 3D side. But then it attempts to show you, you know, give you the fake 3D look, so to speak. We haven't come to 3D yet, so we work with what we had at this point, okay? So, yeah, there you go. That's uh, roughly the, the, the look of things in 2D that attempts to simulate 3D. Isometric view. The isometric view is one of the most popular three-dimensional views we can choose in our technical documentation. Simply, it is one of those views of angles huh, which looks the most realistic to the human eye. But it is not the only three-dimensional uh, 2D technical documentation. Okay? There are also examples Okay, on top of the isometric drawing, there are also, on the second part here, the axonometric drawing. If you look at my screen down here at this point, uh, it says here 45, it can come in varieties of 45, 45 degrees. It can also come in variations of 30, 60 degrees, this way, or 30, 60 degrees the other way. The key difference between these things, um, these isometric Isometric drawings and axonometric drawings compared to the perspective drawing is that it does not converge. That means there's no vanishing point, no convergent line. So that's why we can use it for accuracy and there's no, uh, there's no deviation and we do not need to estimate. It can be drawn precisely. One of the rarer views uh, that you will see when you come across, right? it will be what we call the oblique drawing. It comes in a variety of 45, uh, flat 90 degree drawing, or it can be 45 degrees backwards. Eh? So let me show you, let me show you what, uh, what could possibly be an oblique drawing. So an oblique projection looks something like this. You will have this, drawn orthographically, like a plan, like an elevation, except everything converges, or it does not converge, everything tilts 45 degrees from here. So there's a 45 degree difference down here. Okay, this is just additional knowledge for you to find out more. Huh? There is a difference between isometric view and isometric projection. In AutoCAD, you can have them in, a, in an isometric view situation. That means, if you have it modeled, if you have this object in 3D, if you have it in 3D, it can be 
an isometric view like that. So when you really rotate it, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty 3D, uh, so to speak. So this one is a 3D real object situation. Get rid of this. Now, but an isometric projection uh, is going to be something that is 2D. Okay. Now the key difference between this is in an event that you view it in an isometric view, the drawing is not accurate. When you plot later on, when you the dimension will not be, for example, if you have a thousand by thousand by thousand cube, it will not be accurately one thousand. So in this case, the isometric projection will be the most accurate one, which because it is drafted. So let's start with learning how to draw this part out. Now we've got this crosshair. You see my crosshair down here, yeah? This one. This is what we call the orthographic okay, drawing mode. Orthographic drawing mode. Now we can toggle this by keying in this command called, when we need to change it, that's called ISO draft. I-S-O-D-R-A-F-T. ISO draft. So here. And then this is what we call the sub option. Eh? The sub options will then appear. Hey, do you want it autographic? At the moment, we are autographic, okay? Or you want an isoplane left, top, or right? So there are three variations on top of that. So do you see also it is in blue color header here somewhere? That blue color uppercase letter will be your option that you can choose to make the change. For example, I want to use isoplane left. So I will key in from on top of this L space. Alright? I'm in zoom mode. Okay, one more time. Huh? So draft. Okay, and then I use left. Notice now my crosshair is no longer 90 degrees, but it's tilted 30 degrees already. The red line has tilted 30 degrees. And this will allow us to lock at a particular angle so that it doesn't run. The thing is, when I start drawing though, I must ensure I have my auto, this auto mode on. Notice if I switch it off, it can be any angle I draw. It really doesn't matter whether I have to, I'm in isoplane, isodraft mode or not. I have to be on that mode so that I can draw. Clear? This is on the left side. If I want to toggle everything and I want to change it to the right side, I can press the shortcut key called F5. F5. Notice what happens when I keep pressing the F5 command. For some of you, uh, depending on your laptop brand, right, if you're IBM or, or Lenovo, you have to press function F5. Okay, F and F5. If your F5 cannot work, then you must press Fn plus F5 together for this to work. So when I do this, I can simply just draw this and it will lock to a 30 degree angle. And then with this, I toggle again, right? Then I can draw everything else vertically like that. Can? Let's start with a very, very easy exercise now. With this, draw me an isometric cube, one meter by one meter by one meter, one thousand, one thousand, one thousand. Okay, we'll go around. Make sure you can you can do this part of the work first. You should be able to do this in less than a minute's time. All right, same thing. Just key in one thousand.
There is an easier way instead of using the ISO plane to deal with things. You look for this icon down here. It's called isometric drafting. This little crosshair here. When you click on that, it will toggle you from orthographic mode to isometric drawing mode. What can happen is you just select this, you will toggle. Select this, you will also toggle. All right? And then you can change ISO plane top left or right from here. It's a drop down list. So this is quite easy, like, it's not hard to learn. Um, but the problem with this is how do I now how do I draw circles with it, curves with it and all? You will find that hey, if I want to draw circles with this, uh, I don't just click com uh, I don't just click circles. Because if I want to draw a circle in an isometric drawing, then it becomes a little bit uh, strange. It looks like it's not correctly done if I'm doing this. So, actually, this one looks like an ellipse. It's a cube because of that. Huh? It's an ellipse because of this. So, simply, I click ellipse, this ellipse command, and then I do this. Um, yeah, I think I should be able to do this. But then again, no. Oh dear, I made a mistake. Cannot. It's wrong. Still looks wrong, right? What's going on? Huh? Still looks wrong. All right, if I draw, technically, if I draw an ellipse, it should be okay, one, right? But no, it's still wrong. So what do I do with this? All right, um, I can use the ellipse command. Now, if I look, use the ellipse command here, the shortcut key on top of clicking the icon is EL. All right, it's EL here. Key L, this line is where I key in the command. Okay. After I key in the command, if there is a sub command or sub option available, then nothing will happen. You have to read here. Do you see anything highlighted in blue? If it is highlighted in blue, chances are you got to do something. You got to make a choice on things first. So let's look at this. Look for this option here called I, ISO circle. So with this, I will click on I space. With this, I will be able to click on the, let's say, first point, the second point, and then the third point. So if I click on this now, look, now my circle looks a little bit more resembling. I want you to end up creating something like this. You, um, some of you would have this. I enter ellipse command. Look, I don't have the ISO circle option here. All right. Now, you wouldn't have that option here unless you open up or you toggle the ISO draft mode. Notice now I'm in ISO draft mode. When I key in ellipse, then the ISO circle option will appear. If I do not turn it on, then when I key in the ellipse command also, then you see down here there is no there is no ISO circle option. Okay. That's something new here. Okay, draw something that looks like this will do. After I draw this, I got the dimension. Okay. You will find that under annotate. Okay, that's why we normally do our dimensioning. So I do this and then I'll click dimension linear. That's what we normally use. Huh? You will find that if we use dimension linear, uh, don't work. 
stuff don't work properly. It's a problem. Right? Okay, so what can we do? There is another option here called dimension align. So it will follow whatever angle your two points are going to be. For example, if I if I two point this area here and uh, let's say here, it will follow any angle. Okay, so I am going to snap to auto now and I'm going to dimension here and here like this. Okay, sorry, it's a little bit too small. Let me change the scale of this to 1 is to 10 to try and see if we can get it up. Cannot, huh? too small, uh, too small, too. So I'm going to try my luck with 1 is to, let's try 25, see if that works. Yeah, it seems to work properly. Okay, 1 to 25. With this, I can now do my dimensioning this way, this way, all right, like this. Just make everything this way using the match properties command okay do you notice this one don't look very very correct huh? let me see if i can find an example for you. okay hey do you notice any difference here or not this one angle looks more, more real, right? Compared to this guy, isn't it? This one angle like wrong. This one angle like correct. This one, any more difference? If you look at the text here, it looks like it's aligned to this, correct or not? Parallel to the dimension leader lines. This one also parallel to it. So the, but this one angle is a lot more comfortable compared to this one, okay? Like that. So how do we make this happen? So we tweak this. So here goes. Now with this, we type in this command called dim e. Dim e is a shortcut for dim e is a shortcut for dimension editing or dimension edit command. So you key in this command here. What happens is, uh, when you do this. The sub command will appear again. You have home, new, rotate, oblique. We are going to choose this option here called oblique, which is all space. Then you select the dimension you want to tweak. And then you key in game E. Then you choose the sub option all space. What does the prompt ask you to do now? Select object. So you select the object that you want to deal with first. Okay. Then space. Then it forms you enter oblique angle. Enter for none. If you if you want. If you click enter space, enter on right click, it says none. So no change on, nothing will happen. Alright. But if you key in, for example, minus 20, 30. You will now see that the dimensions, this dimension has tilted to 30 degrees. Okay, I have to use minus 30. Yeah? Note this minus 30. I will demonstrate to you one more time, but this time around I use a different value. Okay, here I will do it on the left one. So I'm going to key in dim E again, oblique, select object. And then the obliquing angle will be 30. This time now is a positive 30, not minus 30, this way. So how do we do this? How do I know which one is uh, when I use minus, when I use plus? Okay, just use your head as a reference. Huh? Just use your head as a reference. When I have my head has to tilt left, so I can read the numbers here, so I tilt left, correct? That is minus. When my head is here and I have to read this, I have to keep right to see. That is plus. Can we remember this? Uh, tilt right means positive, tilt left means negative. Can? Okay? I'm going to move on to this. In order to make the text drop down or tilt down, you have to create more text styles. Command is S T Y L E. Style. S-T-Y-L-E. 
you can't find the icon uh, because it's just not there simply there's no icon for this style or you can just remember text style or style okay so key in this command here all right and the text style dialog box will appear here's what i want you to do i want you to click on new and i want you to call it iso 30 r once you have done this already click ok you will find that you have created a new text style here iso 30 r here then i want you to change the the font to roman s Then I want you to change the width factor to 0.7 and the most important bit of all, I want you to change the oblique angle to 30. 30. When you're done with this, then apply it. Next, I want you to click on new again. Do the same thing, call it ISO 30L. Click OK. You will create a new textile here. Everything remains largely similar. Roman S, the font will be Roman S. The width factor is still 0.7, except the oblique angle is now negative 30. When you are done with this, click Apply. How to use this now? So, now that we remember, right? Okay, this is the left side, this is the right side. Huh? This is the right side, this is the left side. So now I'm going to make the font look more aligned and tilted. I'm going to select this dimension here. Notice the ABC icon down here. This is the text size. If I click on the drop down list here, I will see an array of text styles. I am going to choose ISO 30L and see if that works or not. Nope, it doesn't. Then in this case, I'm going to try and use ISO 30R on this. Okay. And I'm going to select this one and change it to ISO 30L. This is the so-called default mode in AutoCAD these days, like that. Pay attention to my text box here. Do you have this? like one line display like this only. It's yours like that. Now, can you make sure uh, you pull it up, pull up this one to show at least three or at least four lines like that, please. And if possible, can you drag this text box to the left and go down a little bit so that it docks and it becomes like this. You are sacrificing screen space, I know but it's very important for you to be able to see at least a couple of lines of commands here. If you cannot see it, you don't know what you are doing. Eh? When you don't know what you are doing, you just cannot do the job. One more thing about um, dimensions and all. Eh? Okay, I'm going to show you how to do, um, how to add on to your dimension style. Okay. Can you key in this command here called Deem ST? It should auto correct you to this. That will call out the so called Dimension Style Manager. If you are using the template, then go down. Deem STY is the short form for Dimension Style. Okay, let me see if I can find the icon somewhere or not. If you are an icon clicker, um, you click on the drop down list and you see this man 
many dimensions style it will come out. Once you have this already, I just want you to learn how to create a new dimension style because in the exercise later on you are going to need it. Huh? So I thought I showed you. Once you've got this, uh, you notice that the diamond, the template that we gave you, it's pretty comprehensive, but it is not globally uh, encompassing. Okay, it's designed for architectural, engineering, and construction in, in general. Okay, but it's not designed for microelectronics, so to speak, or microelectronics plastic. We look for our smallest dimension style, which is, in this case, scale. One. All right. And then we click on new. This button here, new, because we want to create a new one, right? Okay. Hold on first, huh? If you are, I better get everybody in the same pace. Click on scale one and set current first. Click on the set current button and OK. Set current means you want your default selector, if you're creating a new dimension. To be using scale one as your current style. Okay, that's why we use the set current button. After you've done this, then you click on this button called new and just call it say scale two to one. Make bigger for you to see. Scale two is to one. Then there is a start with, you know. Start with essentially really just means uh, hey, you want to copy the dimension star from which one? Or you want to play something fresh new. So if you just say start with one, that means you're copying everything from number one of you. Okay? So that's the idea. That means scale one, you just make a copy of that. Huh? So when you do this, this annotative box is there, leave it unchecked, okay? Leave this unchecked and click continue. I'm going to use uh, this one, move to. We're not going to touch any of these at the moment. I just want you to jump straight to the fifth tab within this new dimension style dialog box. Jump to the fifth tab here and Use the oh you see this use the overall scale of one at the moment. I want you to change that overall scale to 0 0.5 and then click OK and OK. What this really does is uh, in the event that you draw things that are really really small, which is the exercise later on, really small. You will find that if you use dimension style even one, uh, uh, where is my dimension style one? Here. You'll find that it is huge. That's why we need dimension style 0 0.5 or 2.2 to 1. When it is 1 to a bigger number, it is always, you know, scaling things down. But when we go 2 to 1, for example, that means we are magnifying it. We are blowing things up bigger and bigger. Okay? So, it just works in reverse. Same thing, but we work in reverse. That's all. Alright? I hope I'm not confusing you too badly. Okay, then. Next. One last item. Now, here. Hey, I got a point. I got a point point situation. Then how? Decimal point. Alright? So I show you what to tweak on this. Select the dimension you want to add a, de a decimal point to. You can right click and look for properties in which your properties palette will appear here. Look for look for primary unit data. Under precision, doing this will allow you to go decimal places and all. We are not going to go down to this level. Or we're not drawing a microchip or we're not drawing DNA. Uh, so don't need to be super small. We only need to go down to, you see the number of zeros that grow? 
when we do this or not we only need one decimal point so that's how it works the dimension here remains like this correct not the vertical one uh, usually we don't leave it this way we tilt it either way okay so what i'm going to do is i i just want you guys to make sure it is uh it is tilted in in that sense okay it is tilted this way mm. Let's try 30 for now. Okay, let's let's make it this way, tilted this way. Make sure it's tilted like that. Okay, this is this is uh, the first instruction, huh? Like that. Alright. Then the next thing is uh um I I want you to do this. 